our meeting to order. And our first item is we do want to welcome Ms. Brandy Cherry to the board her first meeting representing district number one. So welcome and we look forward to working with you. Brandy. Thank you. I look forward to working with all of you. All right. All right. Good deal. Let's uh, get into our official agenda. The first item tonight is a recommendation needed to accept the board agenda. I make a motion to accept the agenda. Second. Our motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion about the agenda? Not all those in favor of approving it, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the agenda is set. The next thing is the consent agenda and a recommendation to approve it. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. There is no discussion on that. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is approved. Uh, next, we have delegations. I don't believe there are any delegations here tonight to address the board. So we'll move forward with our spotlight and celebration. And of course, that will be from the place we're located by Westchester Elementary School. So, Miss Amy, let's celebrate. Yes, let's do that. Right. I'm going to start again with um, a, something we use for morning announcements. We started this project several, uh, two or three years ago with just our Richmond students, but now all of our students in our school get to participate in morning announcements whether it be with the pledge or they tell a lunch menu or um, just whatever. So I'm gonna share just a piece of that. And, uh, last year in our morning announcements, we focused on the seven habits. <laughs> and this year we're focusing more on our community. And we started with the family, like to show pictures of the family and then it grows to um, the school family, the community at large. And then it'll eventually we're, we're trying to teach kids the difference between a state and a country and a, because you know what state you live in, they'll say America. You know, we're just trying to build community that way too. So we're using our morning announcements to do that. So I'm going to show a piece of that for you.
So again, we're just trying to have our kids exposed to um, a community at large. So that's that's kind of been our focus this year in working on that. And then uh, beyond that, we have a new um, mission statement or a new motto, I'd say. One team, one vision, one goal. And uh, we talked to our staff very early on the school year. What does that mean to you? Obviously, one team means we're all working together to get somewhere. Our vision this year, we decided we uh, would phrase it this way. We're trying to build a culture at Westchester that students can be independent, learn independent, and be readers and thinkers. And that's our overarching goal and our, our overarching vision and our overarching goal would be we're trying to grow every kid at least one academic school year. So that's that's what we all focus on. This is what we say all the time right now around uh, Westchester, one team, one vision, one goal. So uh, with that, we're trying to do monthly celebrations. And uh, so in August, we did Jersey Day to celebrate our new theme, one team, one vision, one goal. So we all dressed in um, jerseys, which was fun. That same day, we also had the Free Home and Baseball team that was here with us that day. So they came in and read books and did things um, with our students. They actually thought those young men were all celebrities. They asked for their autographs. They did all kinds of things. It was really fun. And, and those boys have come back a couple other times as well. We're going to try to do some lunch buddies and that kind of thing. Um, since Ms. Nicole Trask, um, her husband is now the baseball coach at Freddie, so we've kind of got an in on that. So it's pretty awesome. Kelly probably fixed it so her picture She probably did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, we're going to do a So this was Jersey Day. All right. Also, so in September we decided to go along with our challenge for readers. We had a 40 book challenge for the month of September for uh, challenge every student to read 40 books in that month. Uh, we kept up with that, and um, so at the end of the month they had camp read a lot. So they earned little finger flashlights, and the uh, teachers decorated the classrooms and things to look like a little campground. So we did that at the end of September. That was a lot of fun. Um, so we all dressed, up, dressed in our camping gear. And again, we had baseball players here that came in and joined uh, that with us. Pretty fun. There we go. More pictures of that. It's just good to see books in kids' hands, period. And then the baseball team came back and painted our playground for us, which it looks so much better. And another thing we've uh, done this year, we have something called brag tags. There's these little collectible uh, brag tags that students keep on their backpacks. They love them. They get them for attendance. They get them for their case uh, scores. They get them for the reading challenges. Um, if they get sent to my office for something great, they get them. Teachers just hand them out for just whatever. So they're loving uh, collecting those those brag tags. And so every month we have something different for those as well. They love the brag tags. PTO bought those for us and I appreciate it. So here we are, first time passing out the brag tags uh, for the attendance and for the 40 book challenge. That's why they're doing the 40 right there. All right, uh, PTO and parent involvement helps us do a lot of things here at Westchester. Um, so for October, uh, we didn't do any field trips or anything, so we brought the pumpkin patch to our kids. So, uh, what a funny story is, 
we don't let the students play in what we call the meadow anymore for safety reasons. And so there's a first grader when we had this day, she told her mom, she said, I know now why they don't let us play in the meadow anymore. And she said, why not? They planted pumpkins. <laughs> so they went out there and picked their pumpkins and they got to paint them and, and decorate uh, their pumpkins. And then that was our parent involvement night, which they, we did a, a, a book and parents got to uh, make a carrot with them that the bulletin board is still out here. And um, we also had a big challenge and um, because our kids did super well, I got duct taped uh, to the wall and Miss Myra did as well. And then along with that, we did the food pan drive for Eagle's Edge, which was part of that, that whole deal. So that was pretty fun until I slid down. And that wasn't fun anymore. <laughs> and I wanted to talk just a bit about our, some things we've done in after school. After school has been pretty pretty fun too. I've got some really dedicated teachers that um, have been working with that. We do book clubs in after school and then they do uh, STEM type projects in after school. And I want to specifically talk about this. You may have seen this on WBJ. Uh, we they did a whole story about this. We partnered with the animal shelter and they gave us real pictures of real dogs that were waiting to be adopted. So our kids wrote uh, letters to potential um, adopters, adoptees or whatever. And so they did it from their perspective about why they should be adopted. And then those these letters got taken with them to a tractor supply for adoption day and the dogs got adopted. So this was a whole big project we did with the animal shelter, which was awesome. Um, the kids, they did a fantastic job with that and it was on WDJ. And then uh, in October also, we did the pumpkin contest and that was again to, to encourage reading. They had to create the pumpkins and it had to go along with the book. This is how I learned about the book, Dragons Love Tacos. I didn't know that was a book until a couple years ago when I saw the pumpkin. And um, so this encourages kids to read as well. We had that um, in October. And then November, just finished this yesterday, we had a book challenge, a book exchange where students could bring books from home that they've already read or they've outgrown or whatever. And they brought them in and they got to exchange them for some more books to take home. So we did that this week. So again, we're just trying to encourage reading and, and uh, keep kids going with that and encourage them to think and do. I think that's the end of it. Any questions for me? something new that is a new acquired uh, duty that you have this has always been part of the responsibilities of the board but in the past we have been more uh, focused on you know uh, just keeping it at the ground roots level we have such an emphasis now on what our kids are learning and the emphasis has been as you've seen general the general legislators take action with you know what books we allow for kids to read what uh, textbooks we use you know if it's got the word common core that is a sin to the nth degree now so you know it's a lot of emphasis we do uh, uh, invest our resources into books that will engage our kids in high levels of learning and to get down the road um, we have a and this next adoption is for a math books adoption hence the group that we have Included in your list representing uh, this math book adoption committee uh, includes for K3 schools Haley Cloud, Nancy Davidson, Kim Murphy. For fourth and fifth grade, be Melanie Shelton and Amy Wood. For sixth through eighth, be Christy Pennington and Amanda Robertson. And 
Wednesday, 9 through 12, April Schulte and Mike Showers. These have already voiced their willingness to serve on this committee. All of these have either teaching right now in math or have experience, so they're coming at it from their expertise to make sure that what we choose for our math adoption, which will be for next year, will be what we need and we're looking for consensus, making sure that what we're starting in lower grades up to like fifth is consistent across the board, and then like sixth through high school, so that we're having a consistent like book company that we're using. The effort is to make sure that the vocabulary that the lower grades are learning continues through fifth and then starting over in sixth through 12. We've noticed through the last several years that the hardest transition for us is right now in math is moving from eighth grade to high school. So we wanna make sure that there is at least through that sixth through 12th grade or, or EOC grades, is there's a consistency across where they're learning, their vocabulary is consistent. So this, this is my recommendation. These were hand selected by our own math supervisor, Ms. Melanie Peel, or it's her past experience. She was the Southwest Corps uh, for the State Department prior to that or specifically as a math consultant. So her expertise is, is quite uh, extensive. Her experience is very successful in the past and present. And it's based on her recommendation and I support her judgment. So we would need a motion to approve this recommendation of the list of teachers that uh, Mr. Fielder mentioned and it's been provided in the packet. has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion about this adoption or these uh, commencements? If not, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, they are approved. Uh, we also have another recommendation to the board tonight. This is to accept a uh, TIPS USA purchasing agreement, which were part of several purchasing cooperatives, and this would be an additional one. And I'll let uh, Mr. Fielder refer to that as well. Well, and, and shortly to it, just like uh, Shane has mentioned, we are part of other cooperatives. The benefit of this is that for the services or the equipment that we're looking to invest in, we don't have to go through the traditional bidding process for those that have that, you know, that, well, that uh, bottom dollar that is that to the point where we have to have a bid uh, proposal. Uh, and in comparison, all of these in this TIPS USA group have already been vetted against the best, but they, they've had to submit contracts for state bids. So I've had somebody talk about a specific vendor that had a standalone bid uh, or standalone quote that was significantly higher than the same company when it had to go through this TIPS USA. So definitely when we have either equipment or services that we need to purchase, we go through our purchasing cooperatives to see which one can give us the best price. So this is just another one to fold in. It was uh, entertained to the county commission last Monday night and they approved it also pending your approval. Is there a recommendation to, to uh, approve this new purchasing agreement? I'll make a motion to approve. So that motion has been made and seconded. Is there any uh, discussion or questions about it? So this would be a... Uh, but this wouldn't require that. Okay. This, if, if there was some service or equipment that we need or find a need for purchase, we can go through this TIPS. And, and uh, we, we need to. We've done this with Bybor. That's another one that, one of the earlier ones that we had purchased with or partnered with. Any other questions? All right, if there are no additional questions, do we have a recommendation to approve this agreement? Oh, we, we did that already, sorry. The question threw me off. So, uh, <laughs> uh, basically, we just need to vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, it is approved. Thank you very much. All right, lastly, tonight, we just kind of have a moment to touch on any uh, updates, uh, also uh, any questions we may have about projects going on within the school system that may have questions about. Well, and if I could speak, yeah, if I could speak just briefly about the vision, you know, each month I've been providing you uh, as board members uh, a, a focus on where we've been, what the work that we've been doing this year, not just since the last board meeting. 
we have been partnering with the National Institute of Excellence in Teaching for the last several years. They partnered with us the year that everything went COVID, and their services provide us with really robust training for our uh, uh, instructional leaders, for our principals, and now we're going to extend that down into some of our teacher leaders too. We have been training our principals to be better aware of what it means to move from a student's or a teacher-centered classroom setting where they are just standing up and delivering the instruction to be more purposeful to see what the students are learning in the process. What are the students actually doing? And moving from student engagement to the progression to student ownership in the learning. Now we've been talking with NIET and the most recent training we've gone, gone through with them is with success criteria. The importance of teachers in their planning and presentation of not only teaching the content as the, the uh, curriculum standards dictate and making sure that our students are doing or being able to perform the tasks necessary like for math and the instructional focus, but making sure that our students understand these are the criteria it takes for you to have evidence that you have mastered this. You know, again, if the students don't see it, if you don't have a clear distinction of what good work looks like, it's very hard to find. And sometimes frustrations build on that lack of focus, and students seem to kind of walk around and lose motivation. So, you know, what we're hoping is that we have more clarity. We wouldn't go to a football game if there was no clear goal line. There is no success of where are you going to score. So, you know, in my own coaching experience, that's how it ties in with the instructional practice. And for this, we, uh, again, these are, are experts across our nation that are right now based out of Nashville. And, uh, but the lady that we work with most recently uh, is um, out of South Carolina. And that's, um, again, giving us perspective. It's, we're teaching our, 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 school leaders, but then it's going to move to our teacher leaders soon, and um, I just see it as a po positive benefit for all of our kids. Every student deserves the best quality of learning, uh, but it's all associated with what the students are doing, not so much of how the teachers only present. <coughs> and as I included in the last paragraph, state report card, we've had some information about the state report card for a while. Uh, we've known about our data. Uh, it's going out to the general public on the 22nd of this month. At the next meeting, we'll have a more uh, definite time to talk about that, what the things that we are celebrating, what are things that we need to focus our attention on to improve. So that's going to come up next month at uh, the December meeting. Any uh, members have a question about any of the capital projects? Or any other? Jack Street coming along. <coughs> They were working out there today. They've got had to repour <coughs> the footers. I don't know if the cold weather has slowed it down, but they're supposed to be done with that tomorrow. Then they'll turn, I guess, hooking it up over to the construction, other construction company. And at some point next week, the underpinning and the ramp ports and things will show up and they'll put those in. Then they'll fix the line back and hopefully get it done pretty quick. Doing this, doing the steps and. Yeah, they'll have to do a ramp, a ramp off the front and then off the back part, steps, and then they'll have to determine whether they'll be a sidewalk or ramp. Is there a designated time frame that you would give them to? We, we haven't had a definite stop date. Yeah. That, that is something the capital projects I'd like to invest in. Yeah. You know, incentivize if you yeah. get done early, decentivize if you get long, done late. Yeah. You know, I don't know what groups are willing to go into those because you know the, it, you're still dealing with the supply chain issues, and then in some cases, like in ours, we sign up continually for the good, and then we just we don't deliver our project on time. Time to pay up. Good deal. So absolutely, I'm good. It makes people if work. they're willing to do, to do the job, then they're going to hold themselves responsible, yeah. and they should. Yes, sir. I agree. So, well, it depends on the person running the project. I mean, the, the, con the contractor. It all depends on the superintendent the foreman running the project. The man, the man who's on the job. This, right. this job has two entities, though, the modular company does not hook it up or anything like that, so you have to have a, a separate company. But 
this one drug their feet, so the other one's just been sitting away. But it's it's costing them money. This is going to cost them money. So it, yeah, it would be more advantageous to have something in there to push them a little faster. But in this one, in, in this bid, we only had two bid, one backed out. So you had you could either they could take it or leave it, or you could get nothing. So in some instances, we're finding that very few there's very few people out to do that. Well, if you notice the city properties had some tree clearing and was burning off the brush, that would be that would be resolved quick enough. But you know that's taking the next step in that process. Any other questions? Or updates? Is there anything else needs to come to the board? All right. If not, I will share that the next meeting will be Thursday, December fifteenth. The uh, meeting site will be the Chester County Junior High School. And we do need to announce at this meeting that the board will consider at our December meeting a new contract for the superintendent of schools. So that will be uh, in the packet for next month and something that we'll consider at that time. So that being said, with the end of our agenda, this meeting is adjourned.